Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Wellness for All webinar. And today we'll be looking at positivity and mindfulness. And I know mindfulness has been a popular subject throughout our webinars. This week and leading into next week is uh, actually International Happiness at Work Week. And there's no doubt that how positive we're feeling and how happy we're feeling impacts all areas of our lives. Thinking about what we're going to cover today. So we're going to look at what international happiness at work means. Wait for Sandra to catch up with the slides, please. Thanks, Sandra. We're going to look at how we're going to develop a positive mindset and challenge those negative thoughts and discover strategies and techniques that support positivity. And if you haven't already guessed, our guest today is Sandra Saint. We know Sandra well. She's a director and trainer at Golden Tree with Simon Richardson. And Sandra's worked with children, young people, parents, carers, teachers and governors from a range of backgrounds in her roles as a teacher, and as a healthy school improvement advisor in the past. She's also part of a national team and a consultant and verifier of the Young Citizens Award for Schools. So doing a lot of things for our young people, as well as being a trustee and a mum of two. What a busy lady you are, Sandra. Thank you for joining us again today. Thank you very much, Tracy. And as always, it's a pleasure to be here today. What I'd like to do this morning is I'd like us to start off by doing um, a little bit of a, a grounding exercise. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to invite you to just take a moment to make sure you're, you're sitting in a nice dignified posture, nice and, and upright, but not stretched with your feet firmly on the floor um, and, and your chair supporting you. And I'm going to invite you to just be, be grounded, to be fully present um, with, with what we're doing today at this for this, this next hour. We're just going to find a bit of a settled energy. Um, so just slow your breathing down. Just ground yourself. And I'm inviting you to just connect with the reason for being here today which is to, um, to acknowledge and celebrate all of the, the really um, fantastic work around um, workplace wellbeing and wellness that SOAS are facilitating and providing across all of these webinars and lots of other work that's going on throughout the organisation. And just acknowledge and, and celebrate and thank them for that. And just stay with that thought, just for a moment. And then also thinking about yourself in the midst of all of that as a valued employee of SOAS and just repeat to yourself in your head, I am special, I am important, I am unique and I am valuable. And just stay with that thought with your eyes gently closed. And that hopefully is making you smile. And then just bring yourself back into the space. Lovely, thank you. And as Tracy said, um, it is International Week of Happiness at Work um, at the moment. Just a little bit of background on that. I know it seems like a very busy slide, but that's to show you um, that there is a Happiness at Work manifesto. Um, and this is an initiative that started from Holland by a couple of ladies. Um, Happy Office is their actual company. Um, and now Happiness at Work Week is in its third year and it's in almost 40 countries across the world now. Um, and there is the manifesto that you can you can sign up to um, and, and join in with and, and they give you kind of resources um, to help you achieve 
some of the things in, in their manifesto. So just wanted to kind of acknowledge and mention that um, in light of all the things that go on at SOAS as well. Um, and in relation to mental health, work is a protective factor for our mental health. You may think that, you know, work stresses me out um, and it's not good for my mental health, but actually it's about breaking that down. Work in its entirety, being in, in gainful employment or volunteering work is a protective factor for our mental health. There are, there are indeed aspects of work that maybe aren't so good for our mental health and we need to always be working on those. But happiness at work is about meaningful work. It's about healthy relationships and personal development, as well as business development. It's about um, stopping and having to think about unnecessary rules, getting rid of the power play that can go on in organisations, trying to um, reduce and even eliminate some of the complicated processes and procedures that seem unnecessary, that job's worth bit in terms of work. And what that will do is that will reduce um, absenteeism for, from staff and it will also reduce the, the number of unmotivated staff at work. Because we always want to strive for a workplace that is stimulating, that's positive and meaningful, and where staff feel trusted and valued and challenged. And that sounds a lot. So how do we do that? It's not just for Happiness at Work Week, although that is really good at, at kind of bringing the awareness to the fore and the promotion of it. <coughs> Excuse me. But actually, it's some of the really simple things that we can do. Greet our, our colleagues with a smile. A smile is really powerful. It makes us feel good when we smile. It also makes the other person feel good when we smile at them and when they smile back at us. So it kind of perpetuates itself. And the actual act of smiling, as we've mentioned before, I'm sure in other um, mental health webinars, the act of the physical act of smiling triggers off um, chemical releases in the brain in terms of the, the natural feel-good hormones, the oxytocins, the serotonins, the dopamines, the endorphins. Um, and just an example that I can give you anecdotally um, from, from some work that we've done in the past with, with a different organisation, organization actually. Um, and what, what was developed by uh, um, the member of staff that worked on, on one of their reception desks was she made herself a couple of little signs to hold up. One was a thumbs up, just a cardboard cut out of a thumbs up that she would hold up. And the other one was a cardboard cut out that actually just said the word smile in bright colours. And she would hold it up if somebody wasn't smiling or rather than shout across the room, if she could see somebody wasn't smiling, she'd just kind of say their name and hold it up. And it, it really kind of got that lovely atmosphere going. So that they're just small practical examples of, of fun things that we can do. Praising the efforts of our colleagues. Really, it's, it's as simple as saying a well done and a thank you. And, and being specific to say, thank you, what, am I, what are you thanking them for? It could be just writing a note and leaving it on the desk or sticking it on the computer screen when they've walked away. So they come back and read that note. Um, and again, that's evoking the smiling um, and, and all of the things that, that go with that. Surprising someone with kindness, random acts of kindness, an international movement, lots of ideas that you can Google out there in terms of random acts of kindness. But again, it doesn't have to be something costly or complicated. Paying somebody a compliment is a kindness. Making somebody a drink. When you're making your own, just without asking, just make them a drink. When you go out for your lunch, buy somebody else some lunch, if that's something that you're able to do, and just and just give them a, a sandwich or, or whatever it is you're buying. So it can be 
can be these simple things to spread that kindness and keep it going round. And just a, a kind of a caveat on the compliments, we need to learn to be better as, as humans as accepting those compliments, rather than if somebody says, oh, you look really nice today, love that top, oh, this old thing, actually no, thank you, is quite sufficient. Um, and just being creative really, um, with the, in terms of the happiness events this week or at any time throughout the year, um, it could be something ranging from a, a whole day of a carousel of, of various activities, um, right through to something as simple as at lunchtime, we're going to get the colouring books and pens out in the in the break break room staff area and just do a little half hour colouring group. Um, why not put together a toolbox or a kick bag for the office, um, for, for the staff room, or even for the home, and putting things in, in that bag or box, things like a colouring book and, and some pens or pencils, some scented candles, for example, some fresh fruit, thinking about the, the, the goodness that comes with we should eat a rainbow of colours every day and some of the fresh fruit and veg that we can snack at in there. So so really, um, simple things can make a massive, massive difference. On that, something that you, you may have heard of, or you may not have heard of, is toxic positivity. Because having a positive attitude is absolutely not about constantly taking a, a glass half full approach for the sake of it because this risks becoming what's what's known as toxic positivity and that's when the, the positivity and the optimism can become false even to the point of rejecting and denying emotions that we experience life is tough um, we all we all absolutely know that at the moment in terms of you know a global pandemic, energy crisis, um, carbon dioxide being being um, low and not in short supply. Um, life is tough. We've we've all got things going on that are tough in our lives, and these tough things do evoke unpleasant emotions. I'll call them unpleasant emotions sometimes. Things like sadness. But these emotions are just as valid and important as every other emotion. So the pleasant emotions, the smiling, the happiness, absolutely valid, as, as are the, the, the more unpleasant emotions. They need to be felt and they need to be dealt with. So an example is when, when you say, to someone or oh, oh, look on the bright side they tell you something awful that's happened um i had a, a catastrophic leak, leak recently in my house which has affected you know plasterwork walls floors ceilings um, my house is in a mess and somebody saying to me oh look on the bright side um at least it's not in the middle of winter that really doesn't help when i'm thinking yeah but my beautiful kitchen and bathroom are being pulled apart um it could be even the case of you know bereavement or a, or a real loss and change event and somebody is saying oh everything happens for a reason quite often because they don't know what else to say these things are, are quite often unintentional but actually they can can dismiss and ignore and even sometimes shame um the person that, that's feeling those, those unpleasant feelings in terms of or I really shouldn't be feeling like this. And, and actually, it, it, it is most part unintentional and very subtle. Um, but the key is to, to recognise when this starts to happen and it needs to be authentic instead. Positive people have negative thoughts too. The trick is, the difference is, they don't allow them to grow so big, they recognize them, they deal with them,
by responding to them in a way that stops them from becoming unmanageable and weighing them down. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense to you all. So just a couple of, of kind of motivational um, sayings there and messages to, to kind of reinforce what I'm just saying there. You can still be um, sad, angry, upset, overwhelmed, and be positive. It's about recognising and the way you respond to these things so that they don't become unmanageable. Happiness is a mood, but positivity is a mindset. And that links to the resilient thinking skills um, that I know we, we've, we've spoken about resilience on these webinars previously. So just to to summarise that, those resilient thinking skills and the whole growth mindset side of things, based on um, CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, on that model, uh, which basically is acknowledging that we all have a negative bias. We go to the negative first. Um, and a good way to demonstrate that is by me asking you now, to think of three things you're really good at. Compare the time it took you to think of those three things to when I ask you, think of three things you're not very good at. You will have thought of them much quicker. We have a negative bias. So it's about overriding that default setting. The trick is to recognise when we've got these negative thoughts and to, to just pause and just kind of check ourselves and, oops, kind of going down the negative thought, right, need to just reframe that thinking, okay? A, a trick is um, maybe think about, you, you've recognised that negative thought, think about a set of traffic lights. So the negative thought is the red light, negative thought, stop. Just stop. And the amber being, press the pause button. And just give myself a second to reframe what I'm thinking before it changes to go and I've got that positive thought reframed instead. So a, a bit of a traffic light in your mind can be helpful. So, for example, you hear yourself going, I can't do that, red thought. Press the pause button on Amber, and it could be as simple as adding to the end of that, yet. I can't do this, yet. Or, this is difficult, but I'm going to give it my best shot. There's your green thought, off you go. So it, 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 it's practice, it's not easy, it's And we will go back to that negative, from time to time, we're human, we do when we've got a negative bias. But the more you can check yourself on that, the easier it becomes to access that resilient thinking as a, as a default instead. With all of the work that's going on, um, with these wellness we webinars, with, with all of the, the mental health work that's going on, a real key message that, that we're always trying to get out there, and that is growing traction more and more through research, is the parity of esteem. So that's the balance between our physical health and our mental health. They are inextricably linked. They are separate things, but they are inextricably linked. Um, and again, if we kind of keep that in our mind and make sure that we live that healthy healthy lifestyle with that balance. What I'm doing that is good for my, my physical body is also by default good for my mental health. And things that I am doing for my mental health also are, are good for me physically. So just to kind of, kind of um, explain or illustrate that, National National Health Service, the NHS, um, some of the examples they give in terms of um, physical health and, and regular exercise or physical activity. That will reduce the risks of coronary heart disease, stroke, 
type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, certain cancers, um, colon cancer, breast cancer, things like that. But because it's inextricably linked to mental health, re more and more research is showing that actually it's also therefore reducing the risks of things like depression and dementia. So we've got to try and keep things in balance um, because what's good for one is good for the other. And on that, going back to the, the, the kind of the work side of things, another balance we've got to, to maintain, it's, life is a juggling act um, and, and keeping the balance with everything in terms of our work-life balance as well. So, so just a slide there for you to read through in terms of, again, reframing. And those positive thoughts so it is about we only have one stress bucket we don't have one for home and one for work we have one and it all goes together we've got to keep that balance keep things equal and in our life we've got to identify the positives develop a gratitude attitude we need to prioritize so that we don't get overwhelmed that that to-do list prioritize the essential and, and what will wait and still be there tomorrow that there are only so many hours in the day. So setting goals and, and for today, prioritizing what, what's important for now, really important. Um, and what's equally, if not more important, is that if you're starting to feel overwhelmed, whether that's at home in your home life or at work in your work life, is recognizing that and acknowledging and accepting that and asking for help. Talk to someone, talking we know absolutely so good for our mental health, but genuinely saying, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed at the moment. Could somebody take some of this workload off me while I just get things right? I've got a lot going on over here. I need a bit of help over here and vice versa. The support is out there. You've got a fantastic employee assist program in terms of we care at sewers, as well as all of the other external things and your own support networks at home. And I know we care is also there for friends and family. That service is fantastic, as are just generally colleagues looking out for each other and chatting to a colleague. It might not be I need to go through the 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 the, the employee assist program. I just need to have a, a chat and a cup of coffee with somebody um, and, and that support is there. What I'm going to invite you to do now is just think it's only um, nearly half past 10 this morning. So the day is only early, but already today, um, I want you to just um, think for a moment, have a bit of a reflection, try and think of one or two things that you are grateful for so far today. And this is the way we develop a gratitude attitude, which is also, again, really good for us. It, like everything, it gets easier to think of these things with practice. And it may be that you start with the more superfluous and surface level type gratitude things. And with practice, they go a bit deeper um, in terms of things that you are grateful for, more meaningful things. And a good way is keeping um, what's called a gratitude diary. So kind of something that you can try for yourself is of an evening before you go to bed have a piece of paper or a little notebook next next to the bed with a pen um and just write down start off with writing down three things that you've been grateful for throughout that day write them down close it off to sleep do that for a week and then read them back to yourself. 
it will make you smile it will make you feel good you will have nice memories come back from that but don't stop there because i think what what you'll find is it makes you want to continue because you get that those endorphins that 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 feels good me reading that that was some really positive things from from last week by the end of the week you will have um you know if you if you if you manage three things a day for, for seven days then you've got over 20 things that you've been grateful for in that week so the following week try try and up it to four or five things and again at the end of the week read them back and actually what i think you'll find is you will want to keep that going for a while um and eventually it may be that you don't need to write them down but you get into the practice of, of of thinking those things and that becomes a default thing before you switch off to go to sleep so that's a really nice thing to do as well and I've done a bit of a twist on the five a day. We, we all kind of know the message of we're supposed to have a minimum of five a day in terms of our fruit and veg because it's good for our physical health, that, that rainbow in a day, um, because it's five or seven or even nine a, a day, depending on how, how much benefits you're needing from your, your healthy diet. So I've done a bit of a twist on that in terms of are you making sure you're getting your five a day in terms of your mental health and looking after your emotional well-being? So it's a, a little bit of a checklist. Every day, are you making sure that you are doing some smiling and that you've, you've had some laughs? As I've already mentioned, smiling and laughing, the physical act of doing that is good for us because of the um, the triggers that go on in terms of releasing those, those feel good natural hormones. And the activity that I'm going to um, have heard me mention before, but um, no apologies about reinforcing this, um, the mirror challenge, smiling at yourself, making eye contact with yourself, and giving yourself a smile. If you've not done it before, have a go. It can feel a little bit uncomfortable the first time you do it, maybe it's the second, third and fourth times you do it, but it gets easy because we don't smile at ourselves, we smile at other people, and actually we know it feels good when people smile at us. Smile at yourself, you are valuable, remember from the beginning, you are important. So give yourself a smile. In the mirror, doesn't need to be for long, split seconds before you look in the mirror on a night, having a wash, cleaning your teeth, doing your hair, whatever you're doing, having a shave. Split second before you look at what you're doing in the mirror, make eye contact with yourself and give yourself a little bit of a smile. Feel uncomfortable at first if you're already doing that brilliant, keep doing it um, and do it for longer. It makes you feel good. The second thing is, have I had some fun today? And don't leave that to chance. Again, it's linked with the smiling and the laughter, but don't leave having fun to chance. Make it an intention. If you are fortunate enough to have children around, um, they play absolutely all of the time and have fun and lots of laughter. So you can kind of, link into what they're doing if you like is an, is an easy way to have some fun but if you don't have children around we still need to have fun as adults play a board game have a have a bit of a laugh just do something that is fun put on some music and just dance around the room for a minute and a half but have some fun in your day every day have I made sure I have practiced and done something from the five ways to well-being? That give, take notice, keep learning, be active and connecting with others. Those things that turn the tap at the bottom of our stress bucket so that we are draining that level of stress down to keep that capacity at the top to cope with what's coming next good for our mental health. So I've, have I done something for my from my five ways to wellbeing? 
today. Try and develop some mindfulness. Again, mindfulness practice is, is really beneficial for our mental health, for settling our mind, letting our thoughts settle down, improves our focus, it doesn't change anything, but it allows us to, to kind of recharge our batteries and refocus our, our effective thinking to what we've got to deal with. Mindfulness is, is based around using your five senses to ground you. So things like, example, um, I my, my daily mindfulness practice is spending at least a few minutes in my garden, just sitting, if it's under an umbrella, if it's raining, but just sitting in my garden, noticing the colours and the shapes and the movement of things, um, lit, closing my eyes and listening to the sounds, really listening to the sounds that are out there, smelling things. I've, I've put plants in my garden with different different um, fragrances. So what can I smell? I also grow my own so I can do tasting in there and I can do touching in terms of all the textures of things. So that is what I have found is works for me. You can mindfully clean your teeth. Anything that you use your five senses with intention to focus on in that moment is mindfulness. And as I've already mentioned, the gratitude um, and the daily, the, the gratitude diary, for example. To, to bring this webinar to a close, what I'd like to do is um, I'd like you to to invite you, sorry, I am just finding the cursor on my screen because I'm just going to invite you now to just sit back in that dignified pose again. Close your eyes and just listen as we do a bit of a self compassion meditation. This is a, a meta meditation a loving kindness meditation. So settle into a comfortable posture and seating position. So your back is nice and straight. Remember, imagine that string going up from the base of your spine and out the top of your head, just pulling you nice and upright, but not stretched and taut, just nice and dignified. Feet flat on the floor and your hands just resting Gently where they're comfortable. Just gather and collect your attention to the sensations of your body. Feeling the, the chair against your back, your hands resting where they are. Your face, your head, your neck and shoulders, just where they are. The seat below you and the feet below your feet, the, the floor beneath your feet. Just allow yourself to feel a, a little kind of heaviness and weight coming from your body and, and allow yourself to just relax into the support of the chair and the floor. Just ease and settle as much as possible. Just gather your awareness onto the sensations of your breath as it just comes and goes. Everybody's different, you'll feel your breath different places as you breathe in through your nose and blow it out through your mouth. Are you feeling it at the tip of your nose, round your nostrils, top lip, chest or your abdomen? Everybody's different and that's absolutely fine. Just focus on where you can feel your breath. Just feel the sensations of your breath moving in your body. This technique now is about feeling the good things that you wish for. Your wishes originate in your mind and then become part of your reality. So it's really important to make them your best wishes. So I want you to think about yourself now and send yourself a message of loving kindness and repeat these phrases to yourself in your own mind. 
may I be well. May I be happy. May I be at ease. Just repeat that gently to yourself as you just breathe in naturally in through your nose and out through your mouth. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be at ease. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be at ease. What I'd like you to do now is Think about someone you, you love, you care deeply about, and bring their face into your mind's eye and send them this message of loving kindness. May you be well. May you be happy. May you be at ease. May you be well. May you be happy. May you be at ease. May you be well. May you be happy. May you be at ease. And now I'd like you to move and try and think of the name or the, bring the face to mind of an acquaintance, a colleague perhaps. Somebody you, you maybe have no particular feelings towards either way. Bring their name or face into your mind and send them this message of loving kindness. May you be well. May you be happy. May you be at ease. May you be well. May you be happy. May you be at ease. And now, finally, Return your thought back onto yourself. You are special. You deserve these thoughts. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be at ease. Just gently breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be happy. And then when you are ready, just bring your focus, open your eyes, bring your attention back into the room and back to the webinar that we are now doing. Okay. And my parting um, message for today following that and, and, and thank you for, for, for taking part of that. Experiential learning is really important. Do have another go at that. Um, and my parting message for the day is be kind to yourself. Challenge when you, you recognise the negative thought, reframe things, don't let it risk becoming toxic positivity but be genuine and show yourself lots of, of compassion and self-care. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Sandra. If anyone has any comments on that uh, or have got any questions, then if you want to pop those into the question box, I can put those to Sandra. I mean, there's certainly some really good things in there, Sandra. When I think about the workplace and you know, we're now starting to get back into the workplace um, a little bit more, you know, greeting our co-workers with a smile, um, you know, saying thank you to them. They seem such obvious things, uh, but they're not necessarily... There are even things that you can do from the distance in terms of people, anxieties over closeness. These are things you can do at a distance as well. Yeah. Sorry to and I'm always thinking about with the, you know, sort of say thank you to people for work that they've done. I mean, it's lovely to hear that in person. It's great to hear it, you know, even online. Uh, and also now we have got you at Suez and the ability actually to send people 
thank you cards uh, and other messages as well. So do take a look at you at Sewers if you get a chance. And if you haven't registered already, then there are sort of posters around sites. Or if you want to drop me a note even, I can put you in contact with someone who can help you to get online. It, it's really quite easy. Uh, there's lots of benefits in there, lots of discounts at uh, a huge amount of stores, every store you can almost think about. But also there's some really good wellbeing pages and now the uh, the platform that's around uh, awards and you know just sending uh, thank yous to staff and other e-cards uh, to people, which are really, really nice to receive. You can send those just to an individual and it not be shared. Or you can you can send it and it gets posted to the UK Gemma site as well, which is is lovely for other people to see that that's uh, that's happening. So that's one way we can perhaps introduce just a little bit more positivity and happiness uh, here at at Suez. Um, it's interesting that um, you know just sort of smiling and laughing really after you know really intense uh, eighteen months. It's it's good at the moment. Some people are a bit nervous still about going out, but you know certainly I've been out to site, getting back to sites, uh, and also you know sort of out socially with family and friends. And you know once you get over that initial hesitancy, perhaps around it, it is so lovely to be out and you know just have a little bit more light heartedness than perhaps we've had over the last uh, eighteen months. So there's a lot of really good stuff uh, in there Sandra so uh, thanks for that um okay we've not got had any questions come through I think you've got us all calm and relaxed and positive ready for the weekend so uh, I think that right. worked for a lot of us um so let's no, have no a look questions there. either means it, it was really useful and people's brains are, are busy you know, going off on tangents with all the, the really quite simple but creative things they can do, or I've just confused everybody. I think we're all just calm. I'm certainly a lot calmer than I was uh, just before the webinar, getting a few last minute work things to before we kicked off so that I could just give myself this time and space. Um, so let's have a look at what we've got coming up next week. Uh, so next week for our Wellness for All webinar, we're looking at the area of dyslexia and dyslexia awareness. And this is going to be hosted by the Dyslexia Association. So a really interesting webinar coming up for us next week. During the webinar, we'll learn about the different types of dyslexia and also the support that is available for everyone. But in the meantime, do have a happy and positive weekend everyone and thank you so much Sandra for another great session thank you everybody thank you bye bye